The Madhyama Kalamkara is an 8th century Buddhist text, believed to have been originally composed in Sanskrit by Santarakṣita (725–788), which is extant in Tibetan. The Tibetan text was translated from the Sanskrit by Surendra Bodhi Wiley, Lhad Bang Byang Chub, and Junanasutra. Text In the short verse text of the Madhyama Kalamkara, Santarakṣita details his philosophical synthesis of the conventional truth of Yogacara with the ultimate truth of the Madhyamaka, assisted by Buddhist logic with a lengthy discussion of the neither one nor many argument. Topic: <laughs> Dharmic dialogue. The Madhyama Kalamkara is a brief doxographic reprise, a critical thumbnail survey of the philosophical history of Buddhism and its inter- and intra-Dharmic dialogue of medieval Islam. Though somewhat lyrical, it is a summary and a key to his encyclopedic Tattvasamgraha. It has the fullness of the Sutrayana and Mahayana traditions development in its place of origin before the Buddhist tradition of India was transposed by the cultures of the Far East such as China and Japan and elsewhere such as Ceylon and Kashmir where Buddhism was already flourishing in culturally specific forms. The text refutes challenges of Buddhist systems and tenets from within the tradition, and is a pedagogical discourse on the development of the yana, the philosophical challenges posed by the non-Buddhist religions and non-Dharmic traditions of India, and crystallizes a dialectical sophistication of Indian logic and the clarity of debate expected of a Kenpo of Nalanda Vihara. The text was seminal in the tradition of Samai which became known as a Nyingma institution in contrast to the emergent Sama traditions of Atisha's translation phase. It documents the Nyingma view of the two truths, making it a canonical work. Although the text was marginalized due to the rise of the Prasangika subschool of Madhyamaka, it was revived by Ju Mipham's commentary. Samai Monastery The Madhyama Kalamkara and its tradition survived the destruction of Nalanda Vihara and the ascendancy of the Muslim Empire in India during the 13th century eclipse of Buddhism through its transplantation to the Tibetan Plateau by Santarakṣita at the request of Trisong Detson. It was taught at the Samai Monastery, which was safeguarded by the Himalayas. Topic. Commentary in English Lipman 1979 published a study of the Madhyama Kalamkara in English. The text and Ju Mipham's commentary are available in Studies by Doctor and the Padmakara Translation Group 2005. Blumenthal 2004 also provides a version of the Madhyamalamkara with commentary by Gyaltsabja .According to Dr. P. X., the Madhyamakalamkara is renowned as the principal scripture of the Yogacara Madhyamaka Although masters such as Arya Vimuktisena are said to have set forth their presentations of the Madhyamaka in a way that employs the assertions specific to the Vijnanavada, Santarakṣita was the one to found an actual system in which the ultimate freedom from constructs Sanskrit nisprapanka, Tibetan spros bral, is realized through insight into the non-existence of any external matter bahyada, phyi don. This synthesis of Yogacara and Madhyamaka, the two great currents of Mahayana philosophy, the principles of the vast and the profound as originally set forth by Asanga Florida, 4th century and Nagarjuna possibly 150 to 250 CE respectively, is also characterized by its use of the Pramana methods of Dignaga 5th, 6th century and Dharmakirti 6th, 7th century as integral steps towards the realization of the ultimate. Berzin translates the title into English as A Filigree of the Middle Way Madhyamaka Alamkara Logic 
Indian logic is primarily a study of inferences and their patterns. A pramana is a means of knowledge. Indian logic was influenced by grammar, and Greek or classical logic was influenced by mathematics. Vidyabhusana 1921, Randall 1930, and Fyodor Shkabatskoy 1930 used the terms Indian logic and Buddhist logic. The Padmakara Translation Group 2005, p. 157 rendered Mipham's advice that Buddhist logic is required to engage the text. In general, it is important to be familiar with the teachings on probative signs and reasoning and, within that context, the notions of other elimination, the three conditions of the correct sign, and all the methods of proof or refutation. According to the doctrine of Apoha Jishan Sel Wa in Tibetan, an entity is defined as the negation of its opposite, a cow is not a non-cow. Trerapya, the three conditions Dignaga formulated three conditions Sanskrit, trerapya, wiley, tishul gsum, which a logical sign or mark linga must fulfill. It should be present in the case or object under consideration paksa. It should be present in a similar case homologue, sapaksa. It should not be present in a dissimilar case heterologue, vipaksa, when a linga is identified, there are three possibilities, the sign may be present in all, some or none of the sapaxas or vipaxas. Identifying a sign assumes that it is present in the paksa, and the first condition is met. Dignaga combined these in his Hedakakra. Interpretation <inaudible> 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 The commentary on difficult points Sanskrit, Panjika, Wiley, DBU Ma Gngyidka Grell was written by Kamalasila Florida, 713–763 another commentary, remembering the ornament of the middle way Wiley, DBU Ma Gngyi Breed Byang, was written by Gyaltsabje 1364–1432. Lobzang Dongak Choki Gyatso Wiley, Blo Bizang Mdo Snung Chos Kyirgya Mtsho, 1903 1957, also known as Tulku Sungrap, wrote the commentary translated into English as The Sword to Cut Through False Views Wiley, Dbu Ma Gngyi McHan Grell Nyung Ngulta Nan Gcod Pari Ral Gri Topic: Jumipam. The title of Jumipam's commentary, Wiley, Dbu Ma Gngyirnam Bishad, Jam Db Yang's Bla Ma Dgyes Pari Zal Lung, conveys Mipham's precepts in honoring the dictate of his guru, Rtsa Bari Bla Ma, Jam Yang Kyansa Wangpo, 1820 to 1892, who charged him with the commentary. Manjushri is used as a term of respect for the scholarship and understanding beyond letters and words of his rhyme teacher. Suchness is the revelation of Mipham's Vajrayana from the Padmakara translation group's colophon 2005, p. 382. Seeing that there are many reasons for expounding the Madhyamakalankara, Jamyang Kyansa Wangpo, our incomparable guide, unbounded in his kindness, whose very name I hardly dare to pronounce, who is the very personification of the compassion of the abbot Bodhisattva, of the master Padmasambhava, and of King Trisongdetsan, who is the sovereign among the learned and accomplished, who is supreme Manjushri appearing in the form of a monk in saffron robes, and whose renown fills the world, gave to me the Indian and Tibetan common commentaries on the Madhyamakalankara, asking me to study them well and to compose a commentary. And as his diamond-like injunction came down upon my head, I earnestly gave myself to the task. Ringutulku et al., 2006, pp. 193–194, in their survey of the rhyme movement, convey the importance of Mipham's commentary to the Nyingmapa and their view of the Two Truths doctrine in light of the Svatantrika Madhyamaka those who assert the ultimate is the illusory nature", view and its Shentong Madhyamaka refinement as qualifying the Prasangika Madhyamaka, those who make no assertions
Then, for the ultimate truth, there are two schools of Madhyamaka, those who assert the ultimate is the illusory nature, and those who make no assertions. To explain further, the first says that the illusory nature is established when the perceiver of an object experiences a perception of that object as being unreal. This view was put forth by Kamalashila, Shantarikshita, and other proponents of the Svatantrika Madhyamaka school. Their view is clearly explained in Mipam Jamyang Gyatso's commentary on Shantarikshita's Ornament of the Middle Way. This commentary by Mipam Rampoche is often considered the most important philosophical text of the Nyingma lineage in Tibet, particularly for those who follow Mipam Rampoche's understanding of the Shentong Madhyamaka view. Topic: <laughs> Neither one nor many. The mindstream of sentient beings is one application of the argument, neither one nor many. Neither one nor many is an application of the third function of the katuskoti of Indian logic. Hopkins and Napper 1983, 1996, p. 160, in Meditation on Emptiness, discussed whether or not a series may be considered a unit, when a continuum of a lifetime is sought in the individual moments of the continuum, it cannot be found. The continuum is not the individual moments nor their composite. If a continuum were a composite of the moments, either each moment would be a continuum or there would be no separate moments. Topic: <laughs> Mindstream In the ninth shloka of the Madhyamalamkara, Santariksita refutes personal singularity. Person is conveyed a continuum understood as neither one nor many. The Padmakara translation group qualifies the word person, Wiley, Gangzag, extending it to all sentient beings. The shloka is translated by the group and doctor. Ju Mipham's commentary on the verse is likewise translated by both sources. Five assertions Ju Mipam made five assertions not unique to Santariksita's view Objects fully qualified objects of comprehension are posited only with respect to things able to function. Consciousness in the absence of an object which knows and illuminates itself is uncommon. The external appears through or due to one's own mind and is considered mind only. The ultimate is divided into enumerated and non-enumerated ultimates. In the enumerated ultimate, objects found by individual valid cognition are understood without contradiction. Topic: <laughs> First. In the first assertion, Santariksita makes the Sautrantika distinction that objects of cognition are of two kinds, abstract, theoretical mental objects including generalities, like classes of objects and their names and actual things, defined as things which function. Although the Sautantrika made that distinction for conventional and ultimate truth, Santariksita discards theoretical or general objects and discusses actual things as conventional truth. He incorporates Dharmakirti's cognition which analyzes conventionalities, connecting that with cognition which analyzes for ultimacy. Second In the second assertion, a self-reflective awareness exists, consciousness can be aware of objects of cognition. This position was later critiqued by Je Tsongkhapa as implying that a self-reflective awareness is separate from objects of cognition. Ju Mipam later qualified its meaning, cognition is self-aware, not a separate material thing. Third In the third assertion, the consciousness-only view of conventional appearances is the best way to progress. Still affirming the supremacy of the Madhyamaka school when students analyze for ultimacy, when relating to conventionalities the mind-only position is recommended. Fourth 
The fourth assertion distinguishes between the ultimate way of abiding established by the Madhyamaka method the non-enumerated ultimate and an approximate enumerated ultimate, a lesser, conventional understanding of the ultimate which leads to the non-enumerated ultimate. As part of his explanation of why this is useful, Mipham quotes Garampa, who references the four conceptual extremes Wiley, MTHA, BZHI, Sanskrit, Kachuranta, the intellect of ordinary people, which investigates ultimate reality, cannot refute in a single stroke all four conceptual extremes. But by refuting these four extremes one after the other and by meditating properly, one reaches the path of seeing. This is called the view that sees the Dharmadhatu. To analyze the extremes of existence and non-existence, Ju Mipam advises students to contemplate and establish the lack of inherent existence and then contemplate the extreme of non-existence. In contemplating step by step and enumerating the conceptual extremes, a student progresses toward the ultimate. When all extremes have been analyzed, they reach the non-enumerative ultimate. Fifth In the fifth assertion, analysis of objects with respect to approximate enumerated ultimates does not create a problem of true establishment. A distinction can be made when analyzing for each case, including the two approaches to cognition one for the conventional domain and the other to analyze for ultimacy which are his additions to the pramana tradition of valid cognition. Mipham uses this demonstration in his commentary to point out a problem with Je Tsongkhapa's approach of negating the predicate of true establishment instead of the object of perception, which is avoided in Santarakṣita's approach. Mipham also notes that many Prasangika writers, similar to their Svatantrika counterparts, made positive assertions to move students closer to the ultimate view, pointing out that the distinction between Prasangika and Svatantrika lies in how students are taught about conventionalities and not in the consideration of ultimate truth. He concludes that Jasongkapa, in making a distinction based on true establishment, proposes a Svatantrika rather than a Prasangika approach. Footnotes equals equals notes. <laughs>